Hello, hello, and welcome in for Return of the Phantom playthrough. Um, I thought, that is very loud, I thought with um, this season being what it is, that we would go ahead and play something that kind of fits the theme. So it's not a horror game, but let's give this a go. That's some interesting music. Um, select a difficulty. Uh, let's go with novice because I haven't played this before. Ah, Monsieur Montand, there you are. Step down Ooh. here, please. I wish to speak with you. I wasn't expecting voice acting. Oh, I have to click. Oh, oh okay. Was that me? No. Oh, that is me. Is that me? Oh, wow. So this is after the chandelier fell. As manager of the opera, I just wanted to thank you, monsieur. We were so fortunate that you were attending the premiere tonight. Without your assistance in caring for the victims and dealing with the ensuing chaos, the situation would have been much worse. I thank you for all you have done, Raoul. It is not every detective with the surete who is also a patron of the opera. I do hope you will continue to investigate this horrible tragedy. I am afraid we have only just begun. Let us discuss how to proceed. That's interesting that he says Raoul. That's how I've always said it. But like everything else I've heard always says Raoul. And I was like, oh, well, I guess I've been saying it wrong. This guy said Raoul. And I was like, oh, that's how I say it. No need to thank me. Yes, I'm listening. Yes, I'm listening, Monsieur Brie. <laughs> I have a mustache. This tragedy disturbs me a great deal. Uh... I can understand how upset you are about this. I can understand how upset you are about if this. This is what you're talking about. Upset? For heaven's sake, there's a madman loose. He might strike again at any moment. Uh, tell me anything you know about this. Whom do you suggest I speak with? Um... Tell me everything you know about this. There are a lot of lunatics in Paris. I firmly believe that this is a copycat crime. Are you sure you have no suspects at the opera? What do you mean by copycat crime? What do you mean by copycat crime? I keep thinking well, it's I do you not see? This is precisely the same crime committed by the Phantom of the Opera in 1881. Someone is trying to make us think that the Phantom has returned. Uh, are you are sure you, have sure no you have no suspects at the opera? I trust my staff implicitly. Our stage manager has confirmed that all employees were at their positions when the crime occurred. I have sent everyone home. I suppose you could return to the theater tomorrow should you wish to question anyone who is not here now. Okay, then tell, tell me, me more, more about the Phantom. The Phantom. His name was Eric. Eric, yeah. He lived below the opera while the thing was being built. He caused a lot of havoc because he was in love with an ingenue named Christine Day. Day? Some of his things were found at the turn of the century, so he must have died sometime between 1881 okay. and 1900. I've always heard it die, eh? but Day. Christine Day? Any relation to tonight's star? You mean Christine Florent? No, I do not think so. What things were found? His mask, the original score to his opera Don Juan Triumphant, Don and a wedding Juan ring, Triumphant. supposedly the one he originally gave to Christine Day. She returned it to him before she disappeared with her lover, the Vicomte de Chonet. His name was Raoul too, by the way. <laughs> things are just kind of... Uh... Where are these artifacts now? We have kept them on display in the Opera Library for years. Please feel free to go see them. There are some other documents in the library which will give you some information on the Phantom. How were these artifacts found? Some excavation was performed in the catacombs around the turn of the century. The ruins of a strange abode were found. A skeleton was discovered within, along with the artifacts. It is believed that this was the body of Eric, but nobody has ever really proved it. 
who do you suggest I speak with? Find Charles, our stage manager. He should Charles. be able to help you. Where can I find Charles? You should be able to find him in the stage left wing hmm. at his post. That makes sense, since he's the stage manager. How do I get around the theater? <laughs> I'm just asking him everything. Go east into the orchestra pit and then into the trap room. That should lead you backstage. Charles can direct you from there. All right. What do you want me to do then, monsieur? Mm. I would like you to explore the theater. Talk to people you see. They never tell me everything. Find out where this madman is hiding. Good lord, man. There were people murdered tonight. And I don't think this lunatic is going to stop there. Please, I ask you, Raul, as a friend. See what you can find out. I shall be in my office shortly. Come find me and give me a report on your progress. Then I'll give you further instructions. Empty. Good luck. Until, Until later, later, Monsieur Boy. I shall see you soon, Raul. Alright. Cool. So, I'm gonna take me and my mustache this way. Also, is there a... Okay. Save game, restore game, check score, gameplay options. Music on, sound on, speech on. Interface is easy. Alright. Sounds good. Save. Save. One. One mustache. Okay. So, orchestra pit? Yes. Busted chandelier. Oh look, he said they're <laughs> contemplating. Walk to junk. Look at junk. This is a pile of old boxes and props that were never properly discarded. Unfortunately, every theater in the world has junk like this. Oh, we can stick our head out. Oh! Hi, don't mind me. Good thing you didn't look over here. Yet. <laughs> Footsteps out. Alright. Uh, I wasn't expecting to see him already. is locked. Um, look at lever. The lever looks as if it performs a mechanical function. A uh, pull lever? Oh. Climb through a trap door. How? Uh, can we pull this? Where am I going? Oh, that. Oh no, he's gonna push it. He doesn't want to pull it. Cool. I'm not sure I want to go up there. We just saw the phantom up there, I think. Or at least the copycat. We saw somebody up there. I don't want to go up there. Right. But we're up here. Watch, it was Charles. You, Charles? Walk to gentlemen. Uh, sorry, I thought I was going to talk to him. There we go. Why would I? Yes, what is it? 
Wow, you sound really happy. Are you Charles? Yes, I am Charles. Oh, well. Wow. <laughs> Please tell me a little about the Opera House. Please, tell me about this your job here at the theater. <clears throat> I am the stage manager. Since you obviously do not know what that is, I shall tell you. Quite literally, the stage manager runs the show once rehearsals have ended and the show opens. A show belongs to the director only until opening night, at which time I am in charge. Uh-huh, you're very full of yourself. Please continue describing Please your job so you can listen to yourself talk. From my command station here, I stay in constant communication with virtually everyone in the theater. I make sure the show runs smoothly and without a hitch. I follow the script as it goes and call all of the sound and lighting cues. And although it's not in my official job description, I handle certain personnel problems when they arise. Mm. What sort of personnel problems? I make sure everyone is here on time for one thing. I take care of personality clashes between stars. I make sure everyone is happy. I'm sure. Please tell me a little about you the just Opera House. Reek of happiness. The Opera House was designed by Charles Garnier and first commissioned during the reign of Emperor Napoleon III. Construction began in 1854 with demolition of the already existing buildings on the site, and it wasn't until 1861 that the first foundation stone was laid. The opera did not officially open until 1875. <laughs> Go on, please. This history is fascinating. Go on, please. This history is fascinating. He sounded a lot more genuine than I did. The work was halted in 1870 with the onset of the Franco-Prussian War. Napoleon III was exiled, and the Commune of Paris took control of the city. The opera was taken over by the Communards as an arsenal and warehouse and military prison. Stop sniffing at me. A prison? Many prisoners were incarcerated and tortured deep in the catacombs below the opera. By 1872, the Communards were defeated and the new government was installed. Three years later, the Opera House was completed and staged its first performance. Tell me Those more catacombs. about the catacombs. Oops. The water level on the site was bad. There is a lake deep beneath the stage area. <laughs> it's now yeah. basically a sewer. Ever since the commune was in control and the area was used as a prison, there seems to be a perpetual chill that no amount of modern electric lighting is able to dispel. Some folks believe the area down there to be haunted. That's why we sing music of the night down there. Uh, how do I get down How do there? I get down there? You can't. It was sealed off long ago. If there is a way down there, then it's through some secret passage we don't know about. Very interesting. Very interesting. How big is this building? It covers nearly three acres. It is 17 stories high, seven of which are below street level. The stage itself is 175 feet wide and 85 feet deep. Electric lighting replaced the auditorium gasoliers in 1881. It is a magnificent building. By the, way. By the way, I am Detective Raoul Montan with the Surete. I don't think he cares. What of it? Yeah. <laughs> See? Can you tell me anything about tonight's mishap? Everyone was in the appropriate positions. There was Wait, no one in the fly loft or catwalks. All the lighting is controlled from the booth. I cannot imagine how it could have happened. <laughs> how was the chandelier attached? There is an alcove in the ceiling through which the chandelier's electrical wires and harness are rigged. You must go to the fly loft and traverse the catwalks above the ceiling to get there. The chandelier is periodically pulled up into the alcove for maintenance. Do you have any suspects regarding tonight's mishap? Well, well I don't, drops but some of the ballet girls certainly do. 
What do you mean? The ballet girls know something? Christine Day. They believe it's the opera ghost, you see. One ballerina in particular is spreading rumors. Opera ghost? <laughs> do you mean the phantom of the opera? Yes, isn't it silly? They are saying it's the Phantom's ghost returned to seek revenge on those who did him wrong a hundred years ago. Have you seen a man with a cape <laughs> recently? Cape. No, I have not seen anyone since everyone went home an hour ago. Who is this ballerina? Can I speak with her? Her name is Julie Geary. Oh, I Julie. believe she is still here, probably in her dressing room. I have not seen her leave tonight. Is there Some a of Madame the cast Geary? stay all hours at the theater. Where is Mademoiselle Geary's dressing room? If you go through the stage right door backstage, you will find a staircase to the dressing rooms. Who else might be here? Hmm. As soon as I finish what I'm doing, I'm going home. You might find Christine Florent in her dressing room. She is so dedicated to her art that she never leaves. Okay. Goodbye for now. And thank you, sir. You're welcome. Now I can finish writing down these sound cues so I can get out of here and go home. Goodbye, sir. He was a lovely person. Let's go see if we can follow that dude. I am a little familiar with Phantom of the Opera. Um, especially Andrew Lloyd Webber's version. Uh, I did read the book. But that was like... I was a kid. I don't remember a lot of it. But I did read it. Walk to the yellow brain. How about we... We take, yeah, take the yellow frame. A color frame is a piece of hardware that slides into the slot at the front of the lighting instrument. There is a yellow colored gel in this one. Headset. Walk backstage. Yes, backstage. Where else do we have to go? Not anyone you recognize, okay. Let's go upstairs first. There were the door. Oh, hello! Sakura Blue, someone didn't call heads. Calling heads when you drop something is a first rule in the theater. Hmm, you think? There doesn't appear to be anyone up there. Was this an accident? Or something else? It appears to be just an ordinary the ordinary theater sandbag, but the rope attached to it looks conspicuously cut. Can I take it? I don't know why I'd want to. Okay. I took it. Sandbags are commonly used in theaters as counterweights. This one is a heavy 10-pound bag, and the rope attached to it looks... Yeah. Oh. How rude. Um, let's go. Is up here trying to kill me? Uh, maybe not. Someone's watching you? Yeah. Let's go through that door. <laughs> I don't like it over there. I don't want to go up there. Especially since someone tried to kill me. The 
footstep noises. I'm just going to barge in here. Ball ballerina looks to be about 12 years old, but she is tall and the, she is, okay. Uh, talk to her. Bonjour, monsieur. Have a seat while I practice. Bonjour. I am Detective Raoul Montand. I am Julie Geary. What can I do for you? What are your thoughts regarding the Chandelier tragedy? I am glad you asked. It was the Opera Ghost. He has returned. I always knew he would. What do you mean you always knew he would? How do you know it's the ghost? Because I saw him. Where and when did you see him? It was two nights ago. I was coming out of my dressing room and I saw him on the staircase. He turned to me, then quickly ran up the stairs. I was too frightened to follow. What did he look like? Did he have a cape? He was dressed formally, but his clothes were rather old-fashioned, of the kind they wore during his day. He had on a cape and was carrying a cane. He was not wearing a mask. I only caught a glimpse of his face, for it was very dark. It looked like a skull. Wow. Why do you say that you always knew he would return? Yeah, I wonder Because I have dreamt about it. I have some of the powers that my great-grandmother had, you see. Your great-grandmother? Your great-grandmother? Please, enlighten me. Madame Geary worked at the hey, opera Geary. as what today we would call an usher. She looked after the boxes. She was in charge of the Phantom's personal box. His personal box? Go on, please. It was box five. Box five. He had ordered the manager of the opera to never sell the box, as it was his. He would attend the opera in that box, but no one knew how he got into it. He certainly didn't go through the door. Didn't your great-grandmother see him in the box? Never. She never tried to see him. She was a little afraid of him despite his kindness. But my mother said that great-grandmother told her that Box 5 had some kind of trick in it. Mm. Tell me more about Madame Geary. To put it bluntly, she was a psychic. She communicated with the Phantom without ever seeing him or speaking to him directly. She also wrote a book about him which you can find in the Opera Library. Wow, okay. Tell me about the book. She wrote it around the turn of the century after the Phantom's supposed death. She became something of an authority on the man. If you haven't read it, you probably should. <laughs> okay. Tell me about your dreams. I see him in a haze of darkness and shadows. He emerges. He has a woman with him dressed in white, but I cannot see her face. She is wearing a mask. I think I know who she might be, though. Who do you think she is? The Phantom was in love with a singer named Christine Day. It could be her. But I have a theory that it might be Christine Florent. There is some kind of connection between the two. Not only do they look alike, but they are both gifted singers. Perhaps that is why the ghost has returned here and now. Because of her. Communicated with him? Yes. He would leave her instructions in his box. But she almost always knew beforehand what he wanted and provided it. The ghost tipped her very well. He was good to her. I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed with the voice acting in this. Tell me a little about yourself. Well, I'm a I wasn't expecting it to be voice actor. I am taking acting lessons and hope to become a prima donna like Christine Florent. How long have you been associated with the opera? My family has been with the opera all the way back to my great-grandmother. My mother was a costume seamstress. 
My grandmother was in the ballet like me. My great grandmother worked for the public sector of the opera. Do you know Christine Florent well? Are you guys best friends? She's very sweet, but she tends to keep to herself, like most prima donnas. I believe that she knows more about this chandelier incident than she lets on. She did it. What do you think she knows? When I mentioned that I saw the opera ghost the other day, she turned quite pale and said not to spread such rumors. Merci. I shall speak with you later. Adieu. Adieu, monsieur. Alright. Thank you. I probably should look John. I may come back later and look around the room. really did like uh, Phantom of the Opera as a kid, so... I'm kind of excited. <laughs> fire axe. Can I... Can I take the fire axe? Plant. It's only for emergencies. Now you know this is the star's dressing room corridor. It, uh, yeah. Don't want to click on those. I'm just gonna walk in here. Hope you don't mind. Bonjour. Who are you? Oh. <laughs> I am me. Bonjour. I am Raoul Monton of the Surete. I am Christine Florent. I'm glad you are here. Please sit down. Uh, why are you why glad? Why are you I'm glad here? I am here? Because I believe I am in danger. I've been afraid to mention it to anyone until tonight. Why do you think you are in danger? It's somehow connected with a chandelier falling tonight. What do you mean by, until tonight? You have a kind face, monsieur. I sense that I can trust you. Uh, can you okay. tell me anything about the chandelier it's the mustache, falling? isn't it? Yes, I suppose I must speak up now. I've been afraid to mention anything until this... happened. I believe it is all because of me that those poor people were killed. Why do you think it is all because of you? Because the phantom is after because me. Because the opera ghost has returned to seek his revenge. But why me? I do not know. The opera ghost? What do you know about him? Only that his name was Eric, and he was a talented composer and architect. Some say he possessed some black magic abilities, but who knows? You probably think I might be crazy, but I believe in him. He speaks to me in my dreams. Actually, it's the same dream, over and over. Uh, Tell okay. me about your dreams. There is a mysterious man, dressed formally, in a cape. He's standing in the shadows with a mist surrounding him. He beckons to me. He has a seductive quality that I cannot resist. I go to him, but his face is in shadow. What else happens in the dream? He, well, he makes love to me. At first it is passionate and pleasurable. But then, I always begin to feel trapped. And I struggle to get away. I reach up to move his face into the light, but he won't let me. What does he do then? 
My attempt to see him angers him, and he wraps a thin rope around my neck. He... he starts to strangle me. Just as I start to black out, I wake up. It's very frightening. What makes you think he's after you? Because I received a note from him. A note? What does the note say? That he is seeking his revenge on me for leaving him to die alone or something like that. I don't know what he means. Do you still have this note? Yes. If you want it, and you can have it. It's there in my dressing gown. You wouldn't have thought to give this to the police before... Before now. Get these threatening notes. Have you ever seen him when you were awake? Never. Only in the dream. But little Julie Geary has claimed to have seen him. She describes him just as he appears in the dream. Have you ever heard of Christine Day? Yes, I know the story of the Phantom. No one knows what happened to Christine Day and her lover, Raoul de Chagny. Supposedly, they disappeared together. I don't blame them. I... I have heard stories that I resemble her. You are not related to her, are you? Frankly, I do not know. My grandmother was orphaned, so I'm unsure of my lineage prior to her. There is only one curious clue. And, and what is that clue? Is that clue? That she was born in Scandinavia, and that was where Christine Day was from. And to where it is speculated that she and Raoul de Chagny fled. Oh. I'll take a look at that note, if you don't mind. Please do. Beware. I have returned to seek my revenge against you for leaving me to die in loneliness and solitude. Not even your lover can save you this time. Oh, what? G. Adieu, Mademoiselle Florent. Oh. I must leave now. That's abrupt. Wait, Monsieur. Do not leave me, please. I am frightened. Uh, I must. Continue. I must continue my investigation. I see. But promise me that you will return. All right. I feel like we have known each other before, somewhere. I uh, promise to return. Yes. Merci, monsieur. I look forward to seeing you again. Adieu. Oh, okay. So I have a creepy note. Well, that's a mirror. I'm trying to, I'm trying to exit through the mirror. Which may actually end up being a thing, who knows? All right. Well, that wasn't incredibly kind of creepy. Uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and just save. Save. And that is going to be it for tonight. I hope that everyone is doing really well and has a great evening or day. And thank you so much for coming and hanging out. I'm looking forward to seeing how the rest of this game goes. Um, I love the point-and-click adventures. I love Phantom of the Opera. So here we go. Um, I have seen a little bit of this as a kid, but it was a very long time ago. And I don't really remember this game. So it'll, it'll be interesting. It'll be fun to figure it all out. Because I'm not sure that I've actually played it. I may have watched my sister play it or something. I don't remember. But, um, yeah, as always, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like and subscribe button. I always appreciate every follow, every, everything. You guys have been wonderful. So I will catch you guys next time. Until then, take care. Bye.